Hey guys, Access Worship International is here at New Life Christian Fellowship today because as you can see from the tour buses behind me, Bethel is here. They're doing their, uh, their tour right now on the East Coast. They're gonna be here tonight in Jacksonville, Florida. And today I get to interview one of my awesome good friends who I haven't seen in a while. His name is Josh Baldwin. He's a worship leader with Bethel. And if you don't have his newest CD, The War Is Over, you need to get it. So let's go talk to Josh. Well, we are so excited to be interviewing Josh Baldwin today. So good to see you because it's, good to it's be been here. like years. It's been, yeah, like th how many years has it been? Two or three? Probably two or three since I saw. Well, since yeah. I saw you right before you moved. That's right. To Reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Josh and I go way back, and so I called him up and I was like, "Hey, can you <laughs> can we can I interview you?" <laughs> so this is my first. This is my first interview uh, ever. I'm the guinea pig. You're the guinea pig. You're the perfect guinea pig. Help me, Lord. So, <laughs> this will be fun. I'm a good, yeah, I'm I'm a great guinea pig. Awesome. Yeah. It's going to be great. So um, I thought it'd be cool if you could just tell us a little bit yeah. um, about your story. Where are you from? Because your accent is clearly it's not southern. Cal yeah, it's, it's not, not California, not from California. Um, I, I live in California now, mm -hmm. but I am from Albemarle, North Carolina. But I, that's where I'm from, and my family all still live there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I and live your in, dad, you grew up. Your dad was a my dad is pastor, pastor and um, and was was a worship leader. And he still, I mean, he still leads worship, not as much, but he he does still dabble and uh, <laughs> still plays me songs that he's writing. Mm -hmm. And um and yeah, he I grew up so I grew up in church. Yeah. Assemblies of God in church. Assemblies of God. Yeah, just like you. Just like me. <laughs> Pretty cool. So, yeah. so did you grow up? Like, when did you start playing guitar? Um, I actually didn't start. My first instrument was drums, as you That's know. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, I started when I was probably twelve, playing with my dad in church, and um, and then I think I, how old was I? I was like sixteen or seventeen, when my youth pastor showed me some chords on the guitar. I think he did it in hopes that maybe I would like pick it up and lead worship in youth because we didn't have anybody. Uh -huh, <laughs> and I was sure. like the closest mm -hmm. that we might have. So that I was probably 16 or 17 when I started playing guitar. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at what point, like, do you remember at what point you started to feel like you were maybe called <clears throat> to into, you know, yeah. into worship leading as like yeah. your... I was at, uh, I was asked to lead worship at um, a youth camp that mm -hmm. some friends of ours were doing. And it was actually our youth group and then a couple of these groups involved. And um, I was leading worship there and it was like, I think I was I, uh, my freshman year of college that summer. And um, it was just one of those nights where we led, I led worship and the Lord just came and where mm. everybody's crying and you wow, know, yeah. like, one of those special youth camp <clears throat> nights. It just like changes your life. And the youth pastor there, excuse me, he um, he was like my dad's best friend, Tony, Tony Riddle. Yeah. And um, I remember later that night, we were like, everybody's crying. And I, Tony just like comes up to me and I'm like with my guitar but crying. And he was like, he just starts prophesying over me that this is what I'm called to do. Mm. And, um, and I just like bawled and then just laid on the ground crying. So that was like very much like the time I knew, okay, this is like what I'm called to. Mm -hmm. And I was probably 20, okay. 19 or 20. Yeah. So it was like a real de like defining moment it for was, you. It was, definitely. Yeah. And then what happened, like what was the next step it, for you then after that? The next step was I, I actually went home, um, I went home from school. Well, actually, I broke my leg in, in college. <laughs> Next step was he broke the leg. Yeah, the, he broke. <laughs> the Lord had to force me <laughs> to stop going to that school, <laughs> and I broke mm. my leg playing football and mm. had to go home and do like a year of physical therapy and crazy stuff. Oh, anyway, wow. I got yeah. a job at home. I spent like a year at home trying to figure out what was next, and that was when I found out about Morningstar Ministries. Right. Um, okay. And then I went to the school there in 2001, mm -hmm. and that's where we met. That's where we met. We were in yeah. the same class together. That's and, right. Uh, and yeah, so that was 
that started that whole other journey. That whole journey. Yeah, those were those were really significant yeah. years, I think, for both you and me. Yeah. At Morningstar. Definitely. Um, uh, and you, do you feel like is that when you started to learn how, you know, you, you one of the things I really love about the way you lead worship is yeah. that you know how to find that place where you just start to flow, like you. Yeah. The song might be kind of over, but you just keep flowing on it and yeah. go into that more spontaneous worship. Right. Is that when you started? Is Morning Star when that started for you? It, or? Um, yeah, I, th- I mean, I think that's when it started. Um, yeah, that, I think that's when I was started to become like aware of what what that is and what. Because mm-hmm. I grew up, my dad would, I, I would see my dad do it yeah. at church and leading and, and when I was playing drums. So I was definitely around that, but I just didn't really know what that was necessarily. I, don't, mm-hmm. I, I think that was just kind of like, that was just normal to me, which is amazing that I got to be around that and that was just kind of like the norm and it wasn't just like, just sing the songs and then be done. Right. But um, but Morningstar was definitely when it was, it was like okay to do it. You know, it was just like, mm-hmm. that was like the training ground of, yeah, that learning how to just take, like use a song, have a song like create um, the space and to actually like the launching pad to yep. like go off into something like that. Like exactly. Like flowing and spontaneous and, so yeah, it was when, definitely this. When you, and when that, when you do that, yeah. do you, do you feel like, um, cause people ask me this question all the yeah. time, like how do you flow or how do you, what do you hear? Do you yeah. hear like whole phrases and yeah, then yeah, sing yeah. them out or like what's, what's your yeah. experience with that? How do you experience the I Lord think, in that moment? I, feel, I mean, it's been different ways and, and I feel like in, throughout the years, it's been it's like been stronger at certain points mm-hmm. than than others, and um, I mean, there's been plenty of times where I just if I, maybe sometimes I'm hearing stuff even while we're in the song, and I'm just like, I'm gonna like sure. jump into that, or and it's mm. maybe just the beginnings of like <clears throat> something, but I know that like it's gonna go somewhere. I know I feel really strong about it, and so I'll go into it. But most of the time, it's um. It's a thing where I just we just step back and take a moment to just like chill and mm-hmm. just kind of like hear from the Lord, right? And then I'll we'll hear like like phrases or lines and or they might even start with by just melodies. Well, you know, but. there's so I don't remember what this what year it was. It was several years ago. You were here yeah. when we were doing those Sunday night worship nights oh, called yeah. the Burning Heart yeah, Sessions yeah, yeah. at New Life New Life Christian Fellowship, and you. I don't know what song we were doing, but then you started singing just this prophetically singing oh, this declaration yeah. that I still sing it from time to time. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. one of those things that you deposited here. Yeah, it was for the city. It was for the moment, and it like resonated in people. Yeah, and it like left a mark here. It's a I know, I know, oh, that's I right. know you, you will, will pour out your spirit, spirit on Jacksonville. Jacksonville. I forgot about oh that. Oh my gosh, it was so strong. That was fun. It was so strong yeah. when it was released, like prophetically yeah. in that moment and it's still strong when we yeah sing it again you yeah. know so I, I love that about the spontaneous and, that, and prophetic yeah worship and I know like because now you're with Bethel yeah you're on this tour right now on the, along the east coast yep. Bethel worship nights and we're so happy that you guys are here tonight uh, me too um and so for you know you're leading large groups of people in yeah. corporate praise and corporate worship or whether it's a known song or those kind of moments when it goes spontaneous and there's a proclamation that right. everyone can sing together and you know it's really penetrating the atmosphere. Yeah. I know you have a real heart for for corporate worship yeah. and um I'm wondering like what what do you feel is the the value of that of us coming together yeah. to worship together not just individually but actually joining right. together and joining our voices in worship. No, it's good. That's good. And I I feel like I've even just learned the value of that more in the last like three years mm-hmm. that I've been with Bethel than I even before, which is kind of funny because um, I feel like it's the opposite for most people. Most people grow up in like the corporate worship and the yeah, uh, and then and then they want to go into the like the how do I flow? How do I, how do I get into spontaneous prophetic work? You know, mm-hmm. and I feel like I grew up on the spontaneous prophetic flow and worship. Mm-hmm. With with my dad and Morningstar, and um, and but I was always naturally like, I wanted to like write songs that people would sing with me, and I you know it was just more, and I wanted to do the songs that that 
engaged people and I wanted people to sing. And then yeah. I wanted from there go into like the spontaneous. And so, but I, I feel like at Bethel, um, I just really, I got a good appreciation and, t- and um, for like for the corporate work and that high praise because there's nothing yeah. like, it's just the, the uh, there's nothing that like to me that like breaks down walls and that like just corporate body come together like with just high praise and right yeah just like straight vertical worship to mm-hmm. the Lord um it and then and then it's the uh, thing is is like you do that and then you're like you're bringing everyone together mm-hmm. everyone you you're building trust with with the whole body yeah and then from there it's like then you can go somewhere often like spontaneous or flow and it's like you can actually right. have them come with you have the people come with you faster, I think, when you've done that corporate worship high praise first. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, you know, that doesn't always have to be the case. I mean, my goodness, Don Potter would just like start <laughs> spontaneous and do the whole thing and everybody's true. right there with him. Yeah, and true. that's another level of anointing <laughs> that I don't know that I've stepped in. And, but I, I, just, um, I, I just, I love, I love I love it when 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 the corporate church is just like singing together. There's just nothing. It yeah. just feels so powerful, and you can just the, even the most simple songs just become so powerful when there's just like a, tons of voices singing yeah. it and declaring it. Like some of your songs are just so simple, yeah, but so strong, and people yeah. can grab them quickly. Um, but yeah, I wanted to ask you to tell us a, a little song story, like a all right about one of the songs that are on your new album. Okay. Like your journey with the song, so. I, I think the um, one of the a cool a cool story cool story is uh, the song Abraham. Mm-hmm. It, um, it, it's funny because it ended up being something I never thought it would. It it all started. I was writing with my one of my buddies, my best buddy in in uh, Reading, mm-hmm. Bobby Strand, who um, yeah. produced the album, and we we co-wrote all the songs together, pretty much just me awesome. and him. And, um, and and some other people on different ones, but mm-hmm. most of it was just me and him mm-hmm. in a room together. And uh, this, I remember we were we were planning on writing for this week. We were like, okay, blocked it out. We're just gonna get together every day and, and write. And we were in the middle of writing for the album. And I think we had just like finished another song and we didn't really have any ideas. I mean, we just kind of like had wrapped up a few different songs. So it was like, okay, we're done. And then. It was like one of those weeks where we're just starting fresh and just see where it goes. And he yeah. came in, the mo- it was like a Monday morning and he came in, he's like, dude, I had a dream last night that we wrote a song called Abraham. And I was Seriously? like- Seriously? Yeah, and I was like, wow. okay. So I was like, okay, what else happened? He's like, no, I mean, that was it. I just had a dream <laughs> What we wrote- key was it in? Yeah, <laughs> that's all he had. It's just a dream that we wrote a song called Abraham. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right. <laughs> so we started and, um, I just we read about Abraham. I started reading about the journey of him taking Isaac up the mountain, and mm-hmm. um, and that's like what the chorus was about. And and the, and the verses were all about just like there's this mountain in his way that he can't. There's a mountain in between what the Lord had said and what yeah. what he sees. I was trying to remember the the words in the song. And, <laughs> that's um, so strong. Yeah, and it, it um, I, well we wrote it and and at the end we wanted to just like have this time where um. It was because sometimes songs like that, that I sometimes they they bother me sometimes when there's like zero hope attached to it. You know, it's sure. like when it gets too like inward, mm-hmm. and um, and I just was like, there's got to be something at the end of this that's like hope filled, full of hope, and people can just join in and sing, and maybe you just listen to this part and it and it resonates with you, and at mm-hmm. the end you're like, oh yes, and and then um. Mm-hmm. So that was the bridge was just the I will sing out until I believe that you are faithful and um and the more I listened to it the more I was like I feel like I just this is this is like my story I was like I feel like I okay, just wrote yeah. a song about my last year of uh-huh. my life because we had just moved from Charlotte all the way to Redding California and just the journey that that was that 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 took place in that and the whole like the faith that took place and Mm -hmm. that we needed and I was just reading these lyrics and I was like did I just like write this about my life and I didn't (laughs) know and I was yeah I was like Uh just straight up trying to write a song about Abraham and I let my dad hear it Mm -hmm. and I I sent it to him and he's like man you know what I feel like you just wrote this song about me this is like my Uh story and I was like oh my goodness and then Mm -hmm. I sent it to Sheila's dad who's he's a a pastor too and uh 
he was like, oh, I love this. This reminds me of my journey with the Lord. And I was like, oh my goodness. And then, you know, the Lord was like, well, you know, Abraham is the father of me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, hello. Yeah, obviously <laughs> what you guys are going through, he mm. might have gone through too. Mm. Like, but it was just so cool to see like how, like the Lord took something that I just had no, and that's most of the time in my life. I don't, I'm, mm. I, um, I hear the Lord. I go, I, I, I go after it, but I, I don't. I have a harder time seeing down the road and seeing like the bigger picture. Right. And I feel like the Lord knows that, and He's like, "Why don't you just stay right here and write a song about Abraham?" Mm-hmm. And then I'll, later I'll show you like what you're really doing. That's really so that's amazing. Really cool. That's a really cool story, and yeah. and just knowing so many people who hear that song are gonna experience the same thing. Like this is my story. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for, um, thanks for taking me. the time. This has been really good. Yeah. Um, catching up with you and. We're excited about tonight. I know, Looking I can't wait. to be in there. What songs are you doing tonight? Is it a secret? No, it's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it can be. I can keep it from you. Uh, but I won't. I'll tell you. I'm doing Endlessly. Cool. And uh, I'm doing You Deserve It All. Awesome. And then I'm actually singing a, a, a song that's a, it's a new song. Not many people know it. It's called No Longer Slaves. <laughs> I have never heard of that. Yeah. I look forward Fingers to Fingers crossed we're hoping it takes off and the Lord does something with it. <laughs> it but might. I didn't write that song, but our good friend Jonathan Helser wrote that yes. song. But yeah. Love them too. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see you tonight. Yeah. See you there. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to our very first interview on our YouTube channel. Stay tuned because we're going to do more of these interviews with different worship leaders who come into town and some of our uh, local worship leaders right here in the city. So if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, be sure and do that. Like us and share this video. We'll see you next time.